So, if I might begin, I wanted to ask, first of all, actually, about the inspiration for the film, whether there was a particular, I don't know, visual image or story or news story that gave you the germ for this story about these characters. Okay, so what I would like to tell you first, that in 2010, um, it's actually a volunteer movement appeared in Russia, and it was created um, just on the back of a very tragic event. And in 2015, in summer 2015, uh, media uh, published a lot of articles about this movement, how it was created, history, and so on. And my co-director, Oleg Nag... Co-writer. Writer, yes, uh, he, uh, Oleg Nagin, he was really affected by this tragic event, which led actually to um, creation of this movement, and emotionally uh, affected, of course. And before the, all this event, for a couple of years, we were thinking about creating some film about a couple who lived together for probably 12 years, and they reached this crisis where they couldn't live together anymore. And basically these two ideas, this movement, volunteer movement, and this idea about creating this film about a couple who uh, couldn't live together, it just was like a spark that came together, and that's how film was done. Um, and it, this is a film in which there is, there's quite a lot of dialogue, or di dialogue about love and reference to love. Um, it's also a film which is overtly about the opposite of love, or the absence of love. And the title in Russian is Nilubov, which is a sort of opposite of love. Um, it also seems to refer to an inability to see beyond oneself, a kind of narcissism that is aided by contemporary society technology. Um, so we see a lot of telephones, uh, social media, selfies, things like that. So my question is, is this a sort of diagnosis of a contemporary problem? And is, is it a problem that's a problem for Russia, or is it something wider? Um, <laughs> and is there an answer in the film to this lack of love? So what I would like to say is that minimum, even that fact that people exist in society that can give their love and their time to help and to decay their time in order to help other people, completely unknown strangers, and basically to help them to bring some something back. And I think this is already, obviously, if the people exist, that there is um, hope that it will be something good in the society. без сомнения, конечно же, это не может быть только исключительно проблемой России или территории именуемой Российской Федерации. Ну, вот у меня нет никаких сомнений в том, что это общечеловеческое, что ли, э, свойство, свойство сосредоточенности на себе, эгоизма, отсутствия эмпатии, ну и так далее. Вот. Вот так. Yes, and I would say that it's probably not just a typical Russian problem. I, I'm sure that it's just overriding uh, issue with a human being. It is something that obviously people can concentrate just on themselves. So this is egoism and no empathy. That's my answer. So basically, we know that it's work of art. And in work of art, just compress everything just in two hours to basically deliver all this meaning. It's like a meaning, hyperbolic meaning um, of all those events. It's, it's quite difficult. Obviously, what we want to do is for you, for the viewers, to give you this uh, understanding of what's going on, this extra effort, which is basically we need to give people, because it's not possible without empathy, without tolerance, without some sort of aim that person actually is the aim, a person is not the product to manipulate. So it's what we wanted to do in our things, that unity, unity is the main thing here because without unity, society will be divided completely. Um, and 
obviously that's why we were showing this all uh, on the background of political context. So previously we were brothers, Ukraine and Russia. And my father was from Ukraine, and basically this part of territory was always something that we consider like part of our country. And um, uh, or minimum, we were considered Ukrainians, like our brothers as well. So and now, what what we're seeing, we become like an enemies. It's just hard to believe, basically. So it's all political games. It's all manipulation. It's all emotions, and. Um, uh, obviously, what we don't want to do is to have the separation, and we don't want to have like fruit of all of these political games, uh, lack of unity. Well done. <laughs> um, could I ask, do you see this film, do you have a kind of perspective that this film can actually change something, that, that this idea can will come across? I mean, I think it comes across beautifully in the film, but... I, th I suppose the fact remains that many in Russia may not watch it. There is a bit of a split in the audience in Russia um, between those who would go to see your films and those who might not. You know, I even don't think about it because it doesn't matter whether people will come, a uh, particular group of people will come to see this film or not. So it's obviously their decision. So I don't think about this. Человек, который развивается, человек, который растет в самом себе, это тот человек, который любопытен, кому интересно, интересен опыт другого, интересно вообще все, что его окружает. Это активный человек, это человек, который растет в самом себе. Вот. Все остальные, ну, с ними ничего не поделаешь. So obviously there are some people who would like to develop, who would like to grow, and this is actually those active uh, actions that they will do. But those people who are not interested in anything at all, it's obviously up to them. We can't change it. Это пропаганда хочет достичь последнего и каждого. Obviously, it's not a propaganda here. It's just propaganda that would like to reach the last person somewhere there. А искусство существует само по себе. Art, it just exists. It just exists on its own. It's like a flower. So if the bee will come and just collect some nectar and turn it into like honey, that's it. Is it important that you so you chose this particular two-year time period? So the, film, the, the, main, the main part of the film takes place in, no, in the autumn of 2012, mm -hmm. and then the coda at the end, the, where we see Boris and Jenya in their new relationships, is in winter 2014. Um, there, and there are very clear times, time stamps in the film. Yeah. Sorry, 2015, I apologise. There are some very clear time stamps in the film uh, so, for example, the way in which you use media, you use the, uh, the television that's on in the background, uh, the radio in the car. Uh, why did you choose that period? Uh, important to mention that André is always investigating the human nature. He's very focused on the characters, the story of who he always tells. And he's very precise with the background. Extraordinarily precise. Precise. Sometimes the background could look like something even more important than it is for Andre and for us when we do the film. It means uh, when we have in Loveless all the TV and radio reports, uh, and movie starts in the uh, fall of 2012. It's an important year for us because this is the last year of the political pro protests and the last year of kind of a big hope of many people to experience the change of political climate in the country. So uh, at the very end of the film, we uh, go with our characters through the uh, very complicated events of the February 2015. And this is already one year of the Ukrainian war. And this is... Uh, High probably time of these, you know, propaganda on Russian TV, and you can, uh, and you could see the uh, TV show, probably the most notoriously known TV show in Russia. So generally, it's extraordinarily important for Andre to have a, a precise background, to.
put his characters exactly in the time which would resonate with an audience and would make the story of these people much broader than just the tale of two, uh, you know, of the man and woman who decided to divorce and who go through the very painful process of splitting the, the, flap, the family. That, that was probably the most important element. Uh, I, I forgot to mention, which is very important, that 2015 was already the year when we, as we believe, when most of the society lost its hope. So we start in the beginning, when it was still, you know, the very much end of the wave of these political protests, and if you've heard about the Bolotnes Square, or something, you know, some protest that, that happened, that occurred in, in Moscow in 2012. And the end, that was already the time when the apathy and, you know, and the ignorance just, you know, dominated all over the society. That's probably the way it's been created. Um, thank you, Andre. Um, there seemed to be a real crisis with, um, between the generations um, in the film, particularly when it comes to obedience and the learning process. And the I it's a. Uh, <laughs> do you want me to repeat? Hi, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> there seemed to be um, a real crisis um, between the generations, between every generation in your film, particularly with regards to the learning process and um, uh, um, disobedience and obedience. Um, sons and daughters disobeying their parents when maybe they should listen to them. And in the case of... Um, uh, the, the boy even obeying kind of the secret desires of the parents to just disappear. I wonder if you could just um, elaborate on kind of um, on kind of this idea of obedience and whether you saw it as um, important to your film. It's quite a sort of strange angle and very un, uh, unexpected angle of the question, uh, so it's quite difficult for me actually to judge and to give an answer. В том смысле, что если вы опираетесь в, в, в этом вопросе на монолог uh, Жени, so obviously if you are looking here at Zhenya's monologue, scene, любви, Борису, when, любила, when she was talking to Boris, yes, when she was just telling him uh, that she never loved anyone and she was talking about her mother. So it wasn't about obedience. Того, любовью, нежности, заботы, Внимание и так далее. It's the question of just of what we are saying, lack of love, attention, tenderness. И не то, чтобы мы хотели подчеркнуть, что это прямое наследие, почти практически, можно сказать, в ногенном каком-то уровне, наследуемое вот это свойство отсутствия эмпатии, отсутствия чувства любви. And it's not something that we would just like to say that it is something on a gene sort of level that's empathy lacking. Because what we're saying here, it's not really, we're not actually searching for what is this character I'm Други, talking about. Другими словами, совершенно бессмысленно ссылаться на мать или на среду. Вот среда заела, или у меня родители были такие, что so учили меня к, 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 тому, к такому отношению э, с другими. То есть утрата вот, это, вот этого свойства, чувства. Потому что это целиком и полностью твоя личная ответственность. So basically, it's really no point to blame somebody, either their surroundings, or family, or parents, because it is basically you, is a person. 
если у тебя такая беда в семье, то проблема только в тебе. Ссылаться на родителей или на еще какие-то причины, на другого твоего партнера. Абсолютно тупиковое занятие. So basically, if you've got something happening like this in your family, it's no point to blame somebody around you. You need to look into yourself. So it's, it's, it's something like dead end. У меня даже такая метафора родилась в связи с этим замыслом, с, с этим фильмом, с этим сценарием. Uh, мы, в общем, играем в какой-то пьесе, как Шекспир сказал, все, весь мир театр и люди в нем актеры. Uh, так вот, если uh, следовать этой метафоре, мы играем в какой-то пьесе, играем свою роль. Нам кажется, что мы достойно ее играем. Но вот тот, кто партнер в моих отношениях, вот он как-то лучше бы другого бы артиста на эту роль. То есть мы, мы полагаем, что проблема вся в другом, а не в нас самих. So yes, what I would like to say as well is that it's sort of like a metaphor came to me. Like obviously you all know Shakespeare said that all the world is a stage and we're just actors. So I thought that what we are doing here as well, we're playing here and we're actors and it's no point to blame again a partner who is doing something wrong. You need to look at yourself. It's not the partner's fault. Мы стремимся к какому-то счастью, которое где-то там, за горизонтом, с другими. Yes, we sort of look at, oh yes, something will be there further down, that will be happiness with others. Но вся проблема в нас самих. But actually the problem lies within us. Нужно inside. измениться самому. We need to change ourselves. Чтобы изменился мир вокруг тебя. Ну, банальные вещи говорю. So obviously I'm just saying mundane things, but in order to change world around us, we need to change ourselves. Банальные вещи в том смысле, что очевидные вещи говорю. Ну, и даже более того, не отвечаю на ваш вопрос. And again, I'm saying this mundane things because obviously it's something that really clear. And again, more, most probably the, uh, the things that I actually am not answering your question. No, уж точно у меня нет никаких идей относительно послушания или нет. But I definitely didn't have any ideas about what you were asking about. Yes. We have a question. Yes, uh, in the Vatican, there's a portrait of Putin on the wall, or as it says in the film. A future rope uh, ripening on the wall. Um, how have the political authorities uh, reacted to your films? Официально власть, в общем, можно сказать, никак не отреагировала так, чтобы ярко. Какие-то маргинальные высказывания были в адрес фильма. I will say that officially it was no reaction at all from the government. There were some sort of marginal remarks somewhere about film. Ну и министр культуры тоже высказался коротко что, дескать, в России так не пьют. And actually, Minister of Culture did say, very concise and very shortly, he said, they don't drink like this in Russia. А в остальном нет, не было никакой такой, скажем так, официальной какой-то властной позиции на этот счет. Not official position. Позиции власти. So, yes, it was no position. Censura. Censura. And there is no kind of censorship. Leviathan has polarized the audience in a way that we have probably not seen for many years since uh, Perestroika or something like that, like 30 years, because the society has been completely divided into, you know, in, in two parts. And one part was uh, heavily, aggressively attacking the film And among them were the members of the parliament and official bureaucrats and some just normal, ordinary people, the people who felt themselves offended. You know, not just because the movie was so tough, but because most of, the, of these people feel themselves offended by definition. They feel themselves unfairly criticized, ostracized, and even deezed by the, by the rest of the world. And uh, so, but the, there was a, a camp of uh, supporters, the people who uh, fought for the film, and we managed to get this film uh, theatrically distributed. It has been uh, leaked in, you know, online after we won Golden Globe, and we've got probably like around 10 million downloads, pirate, of course, pirated uh, uh, downloads. But we were 
strange to say, I must admit, we were happy to, to see so many people watching the film. So I would say, so far, you don't have the state money or state funding. You can feel yourself pretty independent. Once you got the uh, state funding, you can find yourself out in a position of being blamed, criticized, and even uh, somehow punished by the, by the state authorities. Can I just uh, ask, am I right in thinking that Leviathan, Leviathan is the only one that yes. has had state funding? Yes, yeah. uh, that was the, the kind of you know, uh, decision of mine, uh, you know, uh, being aware of the challenging character of the film, I decided to approach the Minister of Culture to get the you know, grant, the state funding. It was approximately 25, even a little bit more, less than 30% of the total budget. I did it in pur on purpose. I wanted to have kind of a protection. You know, I thought that the uh, credit in the beginning minister, with the support of Ministry of Culture of Russia would help and protect us. I was wrong. <laughs> it never helped. Uh, once uh, this, uh, when this scandal, I would say, or dispute started, we've got a lot of criticism exactly for the particular reason that getting the you know, state money, we blame the, fa uh, the state or we criticize the state or whatever. It was pretty complicated. There were many, as Andre said, marginal members of the parliament who were uh, demanding us to you know, bring an... Uh, bringing apologies, kneeling on the Red Square. There were a lot of different, you know, uh, statements uh, from different people. And even the Russian Orthodox Church has been divided. We were heavily criticized by the few official, official, uh, um, you know, officials of, uh, of the church, of the institution. But we were supported by some, uh, interesting enough, uh, quite conservative bishops of the church who said this is the truth and we need to, to change the life but not the film. So uh, in general it's not probably so easy to experience all this uh, you know, th type of theatrical distribution but it's still possible. And Loveless, uh, uh, we got the premiere in Cannes and we went uh, to the cinemas um, I believe on the third day after the Cannes Film Festival. Right, in, immediately we wanted to do that. And it had a pretty you know, wide theatrical release. Of course, it, it has, it's been a controversy over the film, but that's okay. It's exactly why we are doing this film. So we want the people uh, to be emotionally involved. Thank you. Um, hi, it was such a beautiful film. I wondered if you could say something about the, the shooting location. I think it was set in St. Petersburg, but I'm not entirely sure. I maybe glimpsed something from a tram window. Um, could you say something about maybe that city and its role in the film? This is Moscow. It's all Moscow. And river and trees at the beginning of the film. It's a place where our boys walking around. It is all within the area, within the borders of the city. You can say, obviously, it's suburbs of Moscow. So it's still, it's, it's still, so it's still a ring road, Moscow ring road. But it is, it is city, it is city, it's a middle. And it's Schodnitsky Kovsh, what we call it. It's just an area. It's actually something that is environmentally supported. It's and it's, it's where actually in just near the river, all this filming was quite difficult to agree because we couldn't actually allow, they couldn't allow us to bring all our equipment there. And our team brought it on the uh, so we had to carry actually it's all hands because it was not possible other other ways to bring it with transport so we had to carry it 
удивительным является то, что ну, вот это такой уголок совершенно нетронутый, что ли, вообще so диковинной un природы, вообще как зачарованный лес. И потом like ты поднимаешь глаза, и вдруг видишь, что довольно близко от этих деревьев высотные дома и средоточие городской среды. So basically just like quite near, just enchanted forest and next to them all those high buildings. Все интерьеры, которые вы видите в фильме, это декорации, построенные в павильоне. Вот. А экстерьерные съемки Москва и максимум ближайшее Подмосковье. So everything that was interior sort of filming, it's all in studios that was done in Moscow, but obviously exterior it's all nature. Это вот лесные поиски. So, and again, Antenna, all this search in the forest and Moscow, all this area is all again not far away from Moscow, very close. У нас прекрасный город. We've got beautiful city. Мало того, и огромная гигантская страна. And of course, huge country and beautiful. Ваши шервудские леса. As beautiful as your Sherwood's forest. I think we've got time for a couple more questions. I saw one there first, and then I saw one here. Uh, so we, we'll start with this, yeah, in the bright T-shirt. <laughs> so um, in light of uh, what you've talked about, the controversy around your films, would, um, who would you say is the target audience for, say, Loveless? Uh, would you say it's the international viewer? Would you say it's the internal Russian? Who would you say? I've seen um, like uh, the uh, production companies are mostly foreign. Would you say that your audience is internal Russians or do you say they're internationals like us? Yeah, production companies, Russian, the financing companies are different, the foreign ones. <laughs> that's uh, actually, that's how the European cinema is produced. The approximately 20% came from uh, abroad, from, you know, we built up the co-production between the French Why Not production. That's very well known, French company, uh, you know, Uh, Darden Brothers Company from Belgium, Le Film de Fleuve, and German Senator. And then we got the European co-production. And, uh, you know, the Russian private investor. Actually, that's how we build it up. But generally, it's very much to targeted at Russian audience. And as I said, that we had a pretty broad theatrical release with very impressive uh, box office for this type of film, for independent drama. Ну, ну, только, знаете как, только режиссер, это мое рассуждение, это мой взгляд на эти вещи, только режиссер или автор рекламного ролика думает о том, к какому именно зрителю он адресуется. И вот эта самая целевая аудитория, это все риторика, риторика рекламного или пропагандистского кино. So what I will say is that it's probably only director of the advertisements that they think about who are their um, sort of views who would they they would like to them to see them because it's all about propaganda. So it's all rhetoric of basically to reach somebody with their ideas. Мы никогда не задаемся вопросом, какой такой зритель будет смотреть наши фильмы. And we never actually think about that who is the viewer who is will come to see our films. Возможно, в этом и есть возможно. В этом и есть секрет какого-то успеха за пределами той страны, где и на чьем языке сделана картина. So possibly, possibly, it's actually a secret of this film. Because we're not thinking about which language uh, this film, in which language this film is done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is so okay. this is my answer. Okay, so we have a question at the back, and then we'll have a question at the front here. Добрый okay. вечер. Но я хотела знать, так как запретили фильм "Смерть Сталина" в России, вам надо было когда-нибудь So, considering um, they banned the film The Death of Stalin in Russia, have you ever had to edit the content of your films? Uh, <laughs> 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 
Да, к сожалению, в 2014 году, летом, в июле, в июле 1 июля, по-моему, был введен в действие закон о нецензурной лексике, ненормативной лексике. Вот, и мы просто по определению не могли поступить иначе. Мы купировали ненормативную лексику в фильме «Левиафан». В противном случае фильм бы вообще не вышел на экраны. Поэтому этот компромисс был решен в пользу цензуры. Yes, actually, on the 1st of uh, July in 2004, it was a new... 14? Yeah, that's what I said, 2014, yeah. A new law was um, uh, actually uh, got through the parliament uh, where they banned all the um, swear words. So basically for us, it was just a like dilemma, obviously, whether to stop this film from release or just to um, take some, some of it out. Ну, собственно говоря, это все, потому что я даже не представляю себе ни одного инструмента э, в руках э, Министерства культуры или государства, которое могло бы, э, как сказать, регламентировать или как-то регулировать, э, э, редактировать твое произведение. But it's probably the only one because I can't see any other tool in the hands of Minister of Culture that will be able actually to, uh, I don't know, to edit, to edit, yes, our work. So I think we're, we're hanging on your every word, but I think I should now draw things to a close. The film uh, has its nationwide release in the UK on the 9th of February, is that correct? Tell your friends, I'm sure you're incredibly impressed by this film, so do spread the word. Um, uh, obviously it's been nominated for an Oscar, it's nominated for a BAFTA, it's had fantastic uh, critical response, we want everybody to see it. Um, I think it only remains for me to thank uh, Andrea and Alexander enormously for, for coming and bringing this amazing film to, to our screen, screen here tonight. Um, thank you very, very, very much and for answering our questions. Thank you.